win. Uh, they don't match up well with the Clippers. I thought that they were a better team almost the entire year, but they don't match up well against them head to head. Chris Paul back. The Clippers have a just are doing just fantastic. I'd be really worried about playing a healthy Clippers team right now if I was anybody. Truthfully, Houston, uh, San Antonio, any of them, I'd be really worried about playing a Clippers team. Uh, give me Clippers in seven games, seven game series. Clippers win it at home. <sighs> All right, and how about them Eastern Conference motherfuckers? We have the number one seed, Boston Celtics, number eight seed, Chicago Bulls. That's a pretty good matchup, really. Um, if at the beginning of the season I told you this was a 3-6 or a 4-5, you probably would believe me, and I would have believed it as well, but instead it's a 1-8. Boston played very, very good. Chicago may be underperformed. Uh... Well, I mean, Boston's going to be a pretty pretty good favorite here, though. I mean, I, I'm looking at the you know the Celtics in four or five, uh, excuse me five or six games. <coughs> Butler's going to play well. You know, I expect Butler to score in the twenties every game or you know just about every game. Uh, he'll play well defensively. The thing is, the players that he defends, they don't need a lot out of. Well, you know, it's going to be crowded probably. Um, Dwayne Wade, Avery Bradley. That's another matchup that I think actually might favor Avery Bradley at this point. You know, Dwayne Wade, he hasn't even played many games since coming back from his surgery. Obviously older, not as fast, and Bradley's so good defensively. I think I like that. Um, where are we at? Center, we have, what is it, Lopez versus um, Al Horford. I obviously am going to like Horford. He's not a great... Um, offensive center, but you don't really need that in that situation. He is a very good defensive center, and he's a playmaker, and so I think that's going to be a pretty serious advantage there. Uh, the bench, again, going to be an advantage for Boston, and and coaching, I think, is going to be an advantage for Boston. So Boston, you know, the matchup of Isaiah versus Butler, you could see that. I mean, you could see Butler putting up 40 points or yada, yada, and, and winning some games, but I think overall the team's going to be pretty, pretty – uh, mismatched against Boston. I'll say Boston in six. Give me Boston in six. All right, number two versus number seven, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Who would have thought the number two team in the in the East is the fucking Cleveland Cavaliers coming off of that Super, uh, super Bowl victory that they had last year? Fucking soups. Uh, Indiana Pacers are number seven. Indiana obviously played well lately. We already talked about that. Uh, the best Eastern Conference team pretty much in the month of April. They have Paul George. Miles Turner's been playing well. Um, they have a good point guard. They have Jeff Teague. You know, they have, they have a good solid team. Uh, Cleveland should easily win this series. If Cleveland doesn't win this series, it'll be one of the biggest letdowns of all time. Cleveland should win this series in four or five games. I pick them in five, but um, I actually put a little bit of money yesterday on both four games and five games. So I think this should be a pretty easy series. They don't, they don't out... I mean, even Paul George, like, who, who's planning on being up fucking Paul George? It's probably going to be LeBron. That's not a good matchup for the for the Pacers. They don't have a good matchup. I guess Teague, you know, Kyrie's not a good defender, but, like, they don't have a good matchup. They'll probably put Shepard on Teague or whoever they need to shut down in the backcourt. Really bad matchup for the Pace. Um, they're just not, they don't, they need more than one playmaker in order to win that, win that series. It'd really have to be. Uh, some people disappearing like a like a magic act for fucking Cleveland in order to lose that. I think Paul George, he's hot and his scoring is good enough to win you one game. Give me the uh, Cleveland Cavs in five. All right, number three, Toronto Raptors taking on number six, Milwaukee Bucks. I thought that three seed was going to be the Wizards. I've been a Wizards guy basically all year. Toronto, the hottest team in the East right now. Uh, you know, not necessarily in the in the month of fucking April, but they played better than Indiana has even in recent uh, times. They're the uh, they're playing very very well, especially with both Lowry back. Lowry missed like twenty one games, I believe, or something like that. And uh, <clears throat> DeRozan, obviously, he missed you know like twelve or eleven or something like that before. And uh, they're playing the Bucks, obviously, without Jabari, yada yada. We all know who's available there. What do I expect? This is going to be a good series. Um, I'm guessing we're going to see Ibaka on Giannis, and I'm guessing when Ibaka's out, we're going to see P.J. Tucker on Giannis. Um, 
I don't know. The, the, the Bucks aren't going to be able to stop the backcourt of the Raptors. They have the second highest scoring backcourt in the league um, and probably the best overall backcourt in the league in Lowry and DeRozan. The highest scoring backcourt is Lillard and McCollum. Um, the Raptors sometimes struggle in the playoffs, but I think that they're definitely more mature this year. You can tell that with both players missing time and them still getting wins. Um, Milwaukee has no no playoff maturity or experience whatsoever to talk about. Uh, they're good. I don't I don't see much of a, a nervous like a nervous stride in Giannis much at all. I think he's probably a bad motherfucker, but you never know until you're tested. I think that the Toronto Raptors probably win in six games. Um, Greg Monroe should be a starter. I, I, I think that the, the, the Milwaukee Bucks could do things. And thankfully, they finally made Brogdon a starter rather than having Delado. Delado is a good player coming off the bench. He can He's scrappy. He has high energy. He shoots threes. Um, but you don't want him as your starter. You want him to be scrappy and high energy by the time it, you know the other guys are, are a little more burnt. They, you know, that's what you want from Della Vadova. So uh, I think that I'm going to take Toronto in six games. Um, and look at them as probably my dark horse. So my dark horse is to win the title for, for long odds money. And we're talking about Houston. We're talking about the Clips. And we're talking about the Toronto Raptors. I actually wouldn't be... I think that it's like 35% chance the Raptors go to the finals and like 60% chance the Cavs go to the finals and like 5% chance any other team goes to the channels or goes to the, the finals. Um, <clears throat> one game or one matchup series left to talk about. This should be a pretty good one, depending on who we get uh, from one team. Number four seed Washington Wizards, team I've loved all year. Number five seed Atlanta Hawks, team I haven't really cared for all year, lost seven straight, then they won three straight, to get back up to the number five seed. We don't really know what we're going to see from them. Sometimes they shoot the lights out. Sometimes they don't. Their best player. This is a game where the best two players for Atlanta are going to be their bigs. The best two players for Washington are going to be their backcourts. So how well can everybody else adjust? How well can uh, Morris and Gartot play against Millsap and Dwight Howard? Dwight Howard, obviously not a machine anymore, like like he was maybe like eight years ago or whatever. Um and then how well uh, can Schroeder and the and just whoever else they put uh, the rotation of the Atlanta backcourt stop John Wall and Bradley Beal? Of course, how you know who's going to shoot? Washington, one of the better shooting shooting teams in the league with Porter, with Beal, with uh, with Brogdanovich, uh, and Atlanta sort of streaky, but sometimes they hit them and they do win games. They just won uh, over the last week. They beat the Cavs two different times and they beat the Boston Celtics. So they're definitely capable of pulling off some shit. I like the Wizards in six games. I expect Atlanta to be too streaky. John Wall to be virtually unstoppable, especially with Bradley Beal uh, being able to both shoot the three and drive and make plays for himself. I love the Wizards team like I have all year. They have a good bench. Um, Umbre as well. They have more guards they can throw at you. Uh, <clears throat> they might even play a three-guard lineup with Umbre. Bradley Beal, John Wall at times, which is going to make you, um, that's going to be a serious defensive liability for Atlanta. I see Washington win in the series in six. Um, damn good team. Not quite their year. I, I think come next year they could be a title contender, though. Oh, shit. I think that takes us to the end of the show. I don't know. What's going on? Oh, my. We're done. Oh, no, we're not done. We still have my top 10. So I guess that's where we're at. This takes us to the top motherfucking 10. Uh, this is probably going to be the last top 10 I do. I don't know. I don't think I... What the fuck was that? I don't think I have a, another top 10 coming in the playoffs. Seems like it's a little bit redundant at that point. So let's go ahead and do this one, assuming it's going to be the last. Uh, actually, it won't be. There'll be one at the end of the season, at the least. So... We'll do this one for now, and we'll call it good. Uh, so let's do my top 10 NBA rankings. Number 10, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Same place they were last week. Um, they go 2-2 two and two on the week. A lot of losers in one straight. They finished the season 47-35, and 35, the worst record of any team I have on here. Um, it's pretty much where I think they're at, you know, the 
They had another good, good, you know, Old Depot's a good scorer. You know, averaging 17 a game is good. Uh, but if they had another 20, if he could get four more points a game, I think they would, they might be the number nine seed or the number eight seed or seven seed. They would be a different team. But they're not right now. This is what we're going to get. They're my number 10 seed. Number nine, the Washington Wizards. Down one spot from last week from the number eight seed. They go one and two on the week, losers of one straight. Finish the year 49 and 33. Two games better than Oklahoma City, and two games worse than any other team on this list. There's four of them. Um, a little bit disappointing down the stretch. They cooled off. Wall didn't shoot very well the last like eight games or whatever. Beal didn't shoot as well as he did uh, previously the last like whatever number of games. <clears throat> um, they turn it on. They're a top five team. If not, you know they're they're the number nine ten team. As I just you know discussed a minute ago, I think they're probably going to win their first game, or their well their first game too, but their first series, uh, and then they're going to be matched up against who the Celtics, is that right? Yeah, the Celtics, and I think that they'll probably beat the Celtics. I think that we're going to see them make a run in the playoffs. Uh, I like them. Boston's higher on, on on this list, but I do like them in a head to head matchup against them. Uh, number eight, the Boston Celtics. Uh, this is a team I just talked about two seconds ago. Down two spots from last week. Uh, number eight, down from number six. They go 3-0 and on the week, and I still drop, drop them two seeds. Um, they've won their last three games. They finish at 53-29, and number one in the East. Two spots ahead of the next three teams I have ahead of them, and one team I have way ahead of them. But I just don't see enough scoring from them. I, don't, I need to see one more wing or perimeter player that can do some damage in order for me to move them up. And otherwise, I would have no problem putting them up at a number five right now. If I could see them just have one, if Bradley could average like 19 a game or something like that, I would put them at number five, um, which I have had them at kind of consistently pretty close to all season. Number seven, the Utah Jazz. Uh, same spot they were in last week. They go three and one on the week, win their last two games of the season. Finish at 51-31, and 31. obviously tied with the Clippers. We talked about it. Same record as Toronto, same record as Cleveland. Um, I guess I think that they're the worst of those four teams, specifically, and that they're a little bit better than Boston. Obviously, uh, Gordon Hayward's a good scorer. Um, he stepped up this year. I, I could see him taking another step next season. Rudy, Rudy Gobert had you know a massive step forward this season. George Hill kind of reclaimed, or this is probably George Hill's best season, actually. And then they have a good bench, uh, and you just, you know, hood, favored. They have good players all around. Um, <clears throat> in order for them to move up, I need to see the hayward Gobert train become, you know, a dominant uh, wing big train. And then at that point, uh, they could be up in the number four or five spot as well. All right, number six, the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, up three spots from last week where I dropped them because I hated them. Um, they won seven straight games. They go 3-0 and on the week, finish at 51-31. and Same spot as in Toronto, Cleveland, Utah. Uh, I just think that they are a little bit better than Utah right now. And then the matchup is going to favor them. And, um, you know, Chris Paul. If he, if he would have been playing all the entire season, he'd be an MVP candidate right now. Probably higher than, uh, he'd probably be the number five or the number four MVP candidate. Number five, the Toronto Raptors. Same spot I had him last week, 51-31. and 31, Same record as the aforementioned team. 3-0 and this week, won four straight to finish out the season. Um, <clears throat> hottest team in the East, second hottest team in the league after the lack that I just spoke about. What do I need to see from these guys? Um, I need to see them do it in the playoffs. I think that they can beat Cleveland. I think that they, um, I think that they could win the championship. I just got to see it happen. Everybody's going to need to step up a touch. I don't know that DeRozan needs to step up any. Maybe he does. Maybe DeRozan needs to become, go from like an A minus B plus player, probably an A minus player to an A plus player, become a, join that Steph Curry type conversation or James Harden, you know, Russell Westbrook type conversation. Um, and if he does, honestly, there's a few people, you can say the same about Isaiah, you know what I'm saying? Or you can say the same about John Wall. These people, if any of them could step their game up, they could lead their team to a championship this year. 
Uh, great defensive, you know what I mean? They have Patterson, they have P.J. Tucker, they have...